Thank you so much, Louis. I hope you can hear me. I would like to greet first and acknowledge um, Dr. Anisito Orbeta, President of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, Father Mars Tan, President of the Xavier University, and Secretary Maria Belen Acosta of the Mindanao Development Authority. To also my fellow presenters, uh, Dr. Kimba and Dr. Goles, as well as the discussants later, um, Honorable uh, Miguel Almario, Dr. Ponce, and uh, Mr. Galicia. Maayong uh, hapon sa inyong tanan. And hello from Singapore. It is a pleasure to be able to share my thoughts today at the 9th Mindanao Policy Research Forum. Again, my name is Keith Detros. I am the program lead of the Tech for Good Institute. Maybe just a little background about the Institute. The Tech for Good Institute is a nonprofit entity founded in 2021. So we're young and we are seed funded by Grab. Um, we are a young organization, almost just two years old. Uh, the Tech for Good Institute's mission or TFGI, TFGI's mission is to contribute to the development, uh, adoption and governance of digital technology and technology enabled businesses or business models so that the promise of uh, digital solutions may be leveraged to advance inclusive, sustainable growth for Southeast Asia. Uh, we are I'm very grateful again to TIDS, Minda, uh, Philippine APEC uh, Study Center Network, and the Xavier University for the invitation. Um, this the, the, the mission of this conference aligns with TFGI's mission to raise understanding as well as create platforms for conversation on governance issues that contributes to uh, the uh, sustainable development, especially through research. On a personal level, however, this is also a full circle moment for me. While my institute is based in uh, Singapore, um, I've worked before as a young researcher with PIDS. And I came from a humble town in Mintal, Davao City. And it is definitely an honor to be able to contribute to the discussion on how we can manage the twin transition in Mindanao for an inclusive growth. My topic today is actually a combination of the several studies um, within the Tech for Good Institute. I do invite you to visit our website to check uh, some of our studies. Um, while they are regional in scope, uh, they also have uh, country studies that may be relevant to the Philippines. One of the studies here is that we gauged uh, what impact means to Southeast Asia for digital economy companies for Southeast Asia. As well, uh, this was a study um, by surveying around 400 digital economy companies and what, what are, uh, how do they measure their technologies, uh, their impact to society. And another one is the tech for good, a tech for growth, from tech for growth to tech for good uh, study where it was a quantitative, uh, qualitative uh, in nature, and we gathered around 130 policymakers from all of Southeast Asia to discuss what is the next phase of growth um, for the region. And um, my presentation will try to discuss the role of MSMEs and digital economy companies uh, from a regional context, but at the same time, lowering down to the Philippine context and where applicable, we can also look at Mindanao. But let's set the stage first. Next slide, please. So across the region, digitalization continues to be one of the key megatrends of uh, this decade. I think Dr. Francis Kimba also uh, alluded to this one earlier. And the digital decade is what they call uh, where we are living now. And this is true for Southeast Asia and the Philippines in particular. It is expected that technology will continue to have a tremendous impact in driving the development. And it's, this can be seen from the rapid growth of the region's digital economy. So for example, um, Southeast Asia six economies, which is Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam, in total, they're expected to reach around 1 trillion US dollars by 2030. And there are several reasons why this is the case. First, we are increasingly becoming a mobile first population. So today, mobile devices are becoming the main gateways for digital products and services for Southeast Asia. It is estimated that around 88% uh, of internet users in, in the region across Southeast Asia 6 um, are using our smartphone users. And the region's mobile traffic accounts for almost two thirds of all the online traffic. Consumers' mobile first digital behavior actually drives the adoption of digital products and services for both work and personal uh, purposes. 
And at the same time, I bet um, across the region, I think the uh, mobile penetration rate is 132%, uh, which is a testament to it's uh, more, people having more than one phone. And I bet of, of the 257 people, uh, our participants in our Zoom call right now, some of you in our, are doing this call using your phone, as well as there's another phone in your bag or in your pocket. A second thing is that there's no denying that uh, COVID lockdowns in the past have accelerated the digital adoption, leading to more digital consumers. For instance, in the Tech for Good Institute's study, we found that 30% of the consumers in Southeast Asia 6 use, uh, started using digital services during the pandemic. However, um, most of them, or 90% of them, will be will likely to do so. This is because technologies are sticky technologies, and once you are introduced to uh, a new way of doing things or a better way of doing things, you tend to stick to it. In the Philippines, online payments also picked up. Um, Gcash reported, for example, that from 3 million users in 2015, by, the, by September of 2022, there had around 66 million uh, users. Um, another megatrend that we're seeing from a regional perspective is that uh, online to offline platforms such as e-commerce, ride hailing, and food delivery have lowered barriers to entry for the digital economy consumers. So businesses have started, even the MSMEs have started leveraging technologies to grow their business, not only locally, but regionally as well. As we go to the next slide, which is a slide on the Philippines, there is reason to believe that we have room for growth. 2022 estimates by the Philippine Statistics Authority noted that the digital economy is estimated to contribute already $2 trillion, uh, two, two, sorry, 2 trillion pesos um, or 9.4% of the country's GDP. This is an 11% increase from 2021. And there's much potential here with significant economic price if you can accelerate, uh, foster, or sustain this growth. According to Google, the Philippines... Uh, is gross uh, merchandise value. This is Google, Temasek, and Bain. Um, the internet economy could reach between 100 and uh, 150 uh, billion by 2030. Not just, uh, sorry, that not just for the Philippines, but I think uh, uh, this is uh, for the, uh, uh, I, I think this is just for the Philippines. Sorry for that. Um, so finally, um, uh, with a young population, the median age of uh, Filipinos is around 25 years old, we are relatively young compared to the global average of 30 years old, there's considerable potential for expansion of the Philippine digital sector. In 2021, in January, um, Filipinos aged 16 to 24 spent the highest average amount of time using the internet. And the number of digital buyers in the Philippines is expected to grow by 16% uh, annually from 2017 to 2022. This is the second highest growth rate uh, just behind Indonesia. This is key because with a young population, the, they will be also become uh, digital natives. And if nurtured with the right skills and competencies, uh, they can also make up the talent base for growth. Looking at Mindanao, I did some simple calculations last night, depending uh, based on PSA notes, which is on the uh, next slide. Firstly, in Mindanao, there are like around seven in ten households in Mindanao owns a mobile phone. This trend is uh, slightly lower than the national average of eight in ten households in. Uh, the Philippines. And if you can capitalize on this by connecting to the internet or using this as an entry to deliver goods and services, then digital transformation can also be hastened. I acknowledge this is also a difficult or, uh, or a tall order, but this is a must-win challenge. Um, second, however, however, only around 39% of households in Mindanao has access to the internet. Again, this is lower than the national average of around uh, 56%. Um, Zamboanga Peninsula, uh, for example, has the lowest proportion of households with internet access, while Soxargen has have a, or in, and the Davao region are the two having the most uh, uh, access in terms of household. And finally, the most common type of connection being used in Mindanao is via mobile broadband network, which is around 31% of internet users uh, identified or reported this as their way of connecting to the internet. This follows the regional trend we are seeing in Southeast Asia. Uh, earlier, as you as we moved from the, the region to the Philippines to Mindanao, um, we see the importance of the mobile phones as an entry into the digital economy. Uh, while, uh, however, there are still challenges remain, uh, especially for the entire region or the entire island. Uh, this is because it's still the 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 
the number or the internet penetration rate, the household uh, connection to internet access still is below the national average when it comes to digital transformation. So it is against this backdrop of uh, digitalization that we can talk about the twin transition. While we pursue digital uh, digitalization in Mindanao, um, we, might, we must not lose sight uh, of what could be or what is the other, other side of the coin. This transition can also be green. It's, this can also be inclusive, equitable, and sustainable. The challenge here, however, next slide, is you should not forget about the green part in Southeast Asia, the Philippines, and Mindanao. This will be a, a balance of two things. This is uh, responding to the effects of climate change, but as well as driving development agenda for the population, for, for some of the fastest growing economies. These dual challenges, however, are not an endeavor for global tech companies only, especially when we hear of the word digital or just technologies. These problems are not just for your Google, your Meta, your Amazons of the world. Uh, yes, they do play a big role, but there is also one more key component that is prevalent and evident in this transition. And just they may just be just as important uh, than uh, the, uh, the huge players as well. Um, there is space for the smaller players uh, in the digital economy to play a role in the dual transition. And uh, my point here is that next slide. This is because micro, small, and medium enterprises we've often heard have become the backbone of the economy, not only in the Philippines, but in Southeast Asia as a whole. There are 71 million micro, small, and medium MSMEs in Southeast Asia based on the data from the Asian Development Bank. Uh, they can be your sari-sari store in the streets of Surigao or a small entrepreneur weaving shawls or clothes in Bali, Indonesia, or a startup in uh, in Taguig uh, or Cebu doing uh, or supporting or developing new apps and technologies. And consistently around the region, we see an important role they play in development. Next slide. MSMEs account in Southeast Asia for 67% of ASEAN's total employment and 41% of its GDP. This count, uh, especially on employment, is uh, likely to be even higher as many of the micro enterprises actually operate informally. A recent study by ILO or the International Labor Organization shows that globally MSMEs account for an even larger proportion of employment than previously thought. And despite the numbers uh, in the MSMEs in the region contribute to around 19.2% uh, of total export value in 2020. So MSME, de uh, MSME development uh, is already part of most of the country's long-term goals with their success as a crucial driver of inclusive economic growth and digitalization. Uh, from um, these companies are embedded, actually the MSMEs are embedded in the communities they serve and they actually bridge the first and the last mile of the economy if you think about it. Next slide, please. Uh, drive, diving deeper into the context of the Philippines and Mindanao, the 99% 90, figure uh, actually holds true. So in the Philippines, it's around 99.58 uh, of all businesses are MSMEs. Uh, they generate around 5.4 million jobs or 64% uh, or 65% if you round it up of employment generated by businesses in the country. As for Mindanao, um, it still holds true. The trend is still the same. Look, uh, the figure is a bit higher, uh, just slightly by several decimal points with SMEs uh, generating actually close to 1 million jobs there. And uh, it's about 76.45% uh, of all the, uh, of the total employment generated by um, businesses in Mindanao. Next slide, please. As the backbones of many Southeast Asian economies, all economic transitions, including this digital and green transition, can only happen if MSMEs are part of this transition. So how can they be so part of this uh, twin, uh, twin transition? They can do this uh, by partnering first with digital economy companies and also by leveraging technologies that are responsible, uh, supportive, facilitative, and transformative in nature. Um, responsible technologies are the ones that ensure that products and services do no harm. And these are baseline commitments that are needed for companies to be able to maintain and the license to operate. Another kind of technology is the uh, uh, facilitative technologies are the ones that actively prevents harm. Our, previously, uh, our previous speaker noted AI. 
Actually, Google, for example, blocks uh, uses AI to block around 10 million spam emails and phishing emails per minute. And the same sensors in the Internet of Things and predictive AI models that is transforming agri-tech have greatly improved disaster protection and management as well. So uh, as an example of some other facilitative technologies, the Taal volcano in the Philippines erupted in 2020 and authorities were able to give enough warning uh, to evacuate people as well. Um, and similar technologies can also be used by MSMEs to have some impact to society. Technology can also increase efficiency in a facilitative manner. This is perhaps one of the most common uh, use cases for digitalization. This is to streamline the process, save time, as well as increase access, lower cost, and reduce waste. So by reaching and serving customers, for example, Gcash uh, is part of a solution for financial inclusion that is uh, being... Uh, as, uh, Sorry, uh, that is being uh, helping the unbanked and underbanked. So for the Tech for Good Institute, for example, we found that 70% of digital lending uh, users had previously been unable to secure financing from banks and other lenders. And these digital financial services are also able to create new products that meet the needs of the previously underserved segments. Uh, another homegrown example, for example, is uh, Grocery. Uh, tech-enabled B2B platform benefiting um, over 1 million Sari Sari stores across uh, the Philippines. Grocery assists in these stores in managing their inventory, uh, enabling them to place orders and receive deliveries conveniently. Uh, they can also build campaigns and strategies. And they allow uh, the, the platform also allows the stores to provide digital services like bills, payment, and all. And I think in, Mind uh, in Mindanao, MasterCard has announced partnership as well with Minda uh, on uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises, uh, especially when it comes to the region's agriculture and tourism sectors. So the initiative uh, in uh, seeks to include um, citizen digitalization as well as resilience or cyber resilience programs. Um, one other example that I can think of here is in Vietnam, for example, uh, there's a, a startup called Mimosa Tech, which employs an internet connected system or internet of things to help smallholder farmers uh, have yield more effectively and sustainably. So they place moisture, temperature, precipitation and wind sensors on the farms and Mimosa Tech is able to generate irrigation recommendations in real time and sending these updates to farmers via smartphone apps. Um, in Indonesia, again, for example, there's also a, a startup called eFisheries. Uh, they focus on aquaculture intelligence, uh, traditionally uh, underserved due to the lack of scale. Over 30,000 MSME farmers have now benefited from eFisheries, uh, affordable vibration-based smart feeders. So these smart feeders actually help the farmers detect when the fish is hungry, and then they optimize uh, the, the the feeds and um, they reduce the time, the labor, and most importantly, the feed cost as well as the waste, uh, which is good for the environment. They may minimize the water pollution. And even on a more ambitious scale, uh, innovation can also drive transformative impact. Uh, one example of which here is the, that um, we need to think of new ways to be able to solve intractable problems. Uh, the, one example in the Philippines, for example, is the initiative of Gcash, where in part partnership with uh, the G Forest, in partnership with Hope uh, and Central Pacific Food, it has been it has been it has planted one million coconut trees in Mindanao alone. Um, so it also has impacted the lives of small holder uh, small uh, holder farms. And the thing is, uh, as I talk about these different technologies and different applications, the interest is there from MSMEs. A survey from the Employers Confederation of the Philippines showed that over half of the responding uh, MSMEs are aware and actively contribute to the attainable uh, to the attainment of sustainable development goals. In our own research from the Tech for Good Institute, uh, we also see that um, around 85% of the digital economy uh, companies expressed intention towards responsible innovation and sustainability. While the, the challenge, however, still remains because um, while a lot of them say that they want to do good, they all MSMEs still face challenges as we will discuss on the next slide. 
Um, I think um, because in the interest of time, uh, we'll run through just the key challenges for MSMEs. One is limited information on costs and benefits. Like, where do they even start? Will this they, or will they pay? Will this investment pay off in the long run? But uh, more than just the uh, money, it's more also of the information to be given to the MSMEs that is crucial. They might also face limited capacity. Um, all of their efforts, um, all of these technical technical terms may be too complicated. Hence, fits uh, fit for purpose initiatives can help address this issue and technical capacity as well, which includes upskilling and reskilling of MSMEs. And finally, access to finance. Uh, uh, in the research of the Tech for Good Institute, uh, sixty percent of MSMEs in the region noted that they're unable to obtain loans needed. Uh, from uh, loans from traditional financial institutions. So if we also give, uh, they would also need some investments for the twin transition, digital and green transition. Then um, we also need to support MSMEs for this one. To wrap up, uh, next slide, please. I think the main thing here is that um, no one should be left behind between this green transition and uh, digital transition. Uh, there are still challenges for the Philippines. Digital access is still uneven. Segments of the population also face challenges in adopting digital technologies and their digital gaps as well. And sustainability remains an important consideration. Um, I'll end here and uh, I hope look forward to the discussion later on how we can enable uh, sustainable and uh, inclusive growth and development in Mindanao. Thank you so much for the time.